Welcome back. Greg Norman, second shot at 18. He well said, and he knows right now he has to take a fly at that at the hole. You can see what he's faced with: water circling in front and around the back of the green. Two bunkers to the right. The pin is set five feet back from the front. It's not much room to play back there. The traditional Sunday pin placement. I think he likes it. Look out. Look out. Hold up. Look out. Oh. Didn't even phase me one bit. I mean, I, I, I can remember the shot, um, and I cannot ever remember saying, oh, my gosh, you know, get right, get right. I, I just was looking at it going straight down the pipe. With a one-stroke lead, Mize can practically seal the victory if he can make this putt. This would get him a nice two-stroke advantage if he can make it. Well, you saw, probably saw that ball take a little hop just about six inches into its journey, and that was the crucial point, I think, in turning it offline. Ahead to the 18. Norman for birdie to go 12 under to tie Mize, and then the heat turns around on Mize. Oh, Rob. Oh, that was very, very close. That was probably three quarters of a roll firmer. It was in the hole. I mean, I actually thought I made it. I'm a, just a Celtic fan, and uh, I know Danny Ainge and Larry Bird and those guys up there like to play golf, so uh, I just wanted them to know that uh, I'm thinking of those guys while they're out there on the basketball court. Perhaps fearing the pond on the left of the 18th green, Mai's approach shot finds the front right bucker. If he can get up and down for par, he's your Kemper Open champion. This is really a tough shot. Well, I'll tell you what, he's about 10, 11 feet, and that's about as good as you can do under the situation. Down again to Steve Melman. Right, Pat, I've got an interested spectator here, Celtics fan. They're in the house at, what, 11 under? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't. I don't know how close Larry is. I was in there doing my scorecard, and uh, I guess he's, what is he, 10, 12 feet? 10 or 12 feet in a putt that's hard to read. Well, I don't know. I haven't putted from there yet. <laughs> I don't know. I just, uh, I had a good putt there at the 18th. I thought I made it, but, uh, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see what goes on. If there is a playoff, we will start on 16. I just hope the Celtics can wait. That's all. All right, Pat. All right. Thank you, Steve. Larry Mize. He has won once. Danny Thomas in Memphis in 1983. Best finish last year was here. I'll do it for this, and we don't have to say a thing. The gallery will tell you what it did. Oh, he hit a good putt, too. He really hit a good putt. 17 and 18, he was robbed. Well, Greg Norman is 0 for 3 in playoffs, and Larry Mize has never been in one. And they'll go back to 16. So they all rush back to the par 316th for the first hole of sudden death between Larry Mize and Greg Norman. PGA Tour official Wade Cagle has them pick numbers for the honor. Norman will play first. Norman has played this long and difficult par three and one under this week, but his tee shot binds the bunker at 16. Mize has played 16 in par all four days. His tee shot at 16 is on the putting surface, but it is a long way from the cup. Norman's second. 
He catches it a little heavy. Going to come up way short, and he'll have a tester to save par. Mize for birdie, but he's hoping just to lag it up there close. A two-putt par could win him the title, with Norman needing to make a 20-footer to extend the playoff. Well, it was just a right edge putt. If it was, uh, you know, it was fortunately it was a putt where I had to make it, and uh, I had started the putt reasonably aggressive today, and it was a putt that I was allowed to be aggressive because if I missed it, I was finished right there and then. So I just played right edge firm. Around the rim and in, Norman with a fantastic save for par to keep the playoff alive. We move ahead to the 17th. Norman in the right rough, his second shot to the par four. Safely on and within birdie range. It was exactly one year ago that Mize had this exact shot at 17 when he hit it fat to lose the Kemper. Those thoughts clearly had to be running through his mind as he knocked his third shot well past the hole. But like Greg Norman on the previous hole, Mize summoned up the courage to save par. Boy, what a couple of clutch putts. First by Norman, then by Mize. A mad dash to the 18th green where Larry Mize has a 15-footer for birdie. It was a very similar putt to the one he had in regulation, and this, too, slips by on the right side. Greg Norman now has this putt for victory. So after three holes of sudden death, it's still locked up, and they go back to 16 for the second time, actually for the third time today. Norman on the tee to play first. Though he's off the green, he's got it to within birdie range. Mize hit his shot in the same position as before and again has a tough two putt. That's Mize. And he had left that left for par. And Norman was just on the fringe. This is to win it. It's the fourth hole of sudden death. They both made par and we went on to the fifth hole of sudden death. I'm surprised he kept on with the putt, but obviously Larry didn't hear it, and he uh, was in the right mood to keep going through with the, with, with the uh, stroke. So uh, some people would have backed off, some wouldn't. You know, that just depends on how you feel at the time, I guess. Norman from just off the green. Another chance for victory. It's different when you're putting in a uh, playoff. You, you, you have two thoughts in your mind. You want to make the putt, but you don't want to get too aggressive with it, because you're not, there's no, uh, no tomorrow. On to the sixth hole of sudden death, the par 418. Norman hit another rock solid drive down the middle, but Mize is just in the left rough, but with a good angle to the pin. There was not much grass behind the ball, so I thought I was going to be able to get the club head on it pretty clean, and it just, it just took off when I hit it. I saw it, and all of a sudden, I saw it go over the bunker from where I was, and I just, I was very surprised, and I was hoping maybe the grass caught it, but it didn't. Oh, it definitely changed my shot, yeah. It definitely, uh, if, I didn't know where his ball went. I said to Pete, where'd he go? I thought he was in the back bunker, because I didn't see the, any ripples in the water left. And he said, well, he went over the green in the water. And at that time, I was planning on trying to hit the uh, pitching wedge a little more aggressive at the flag. Uh, because if he, like I thought he would have done, just put it in the middle of the green, I was going to try and play a shot at the flag. And when I saw he wasn't on the green, I just said, oh, well, let's just hit a soft one towards the middle of the green. I didn't even think of the flag then. Well, I asked them, and they said it landed just short of the bunker and bounced over. So, you know, I'm just going on what the official told me because I, I was curious. I thought if it landed in the bunker, it would have stayed. It landed in the bunker, didn't it? No, just, just short of the bunker. 
After his ball airmailed the green into the hazard, Mize contemplated his options. But thoughts of successfully playing it out were dashed. I can't get this guy. No. Where was he? So he dropped. Now here's his fourth shot. And that found the water on the other side. Mize went from bad to worse. With the addition of two penalty strokes, the best he could do was a chip in for double bogey six. Though he was away, Mize allowed Norman to complete the hole and capture victory. It was another heartbreaking defeat for the Augusta native. The two putt par was a mere formality. Pressure is a pressure wanting to win all the time. I mean, every player wants to win. Uh, and to me, I'd rather have the trophy on the, the wall than the money in the bank because I know that the trophy is going to bring the money sooner or later. Uh, you know, it's always it's nice to have a check that's uh, there, but to me, I'd just rather win the trophy because uh, that's why I enjoy playing the game. I just love to compete. With his victory, Greg Norman had earned nearly $450,000 for the season. And he later surpassed the record set by Curtis Strange in 1985 as he went on to win the British Open at Turnberry. Thing that uh, it's in your system. You learn how to do it, and you uh, stick to the same rules or game plans that, that got you there originally. And believing in yourself, I think, is the biggest key to the whole deal. And believe that you can win, even if you lose. Say to yourself, "Well, I went down fighting anyway." 